You are tuned in to Mind Fuzz on CFRU 93.3 FM in Guelph or online at CFRU.ca. My name is Laura. I'll be your host until 8 p.m. tonight. Uh, tonight's a very special episode of Mind Fuzz because we have a Guelph-based band No Boys here in the studio. Uh, they're going to play some music for us and hopefully chat a little bit with me. Uh, so we're going to go into uh, a song first and then we'll talk to them right after. So here are No Boys. Hey, what's up? Thank you for having us. All right. on Mind Fuzz on CFRU 93.3 FM in Guelph. Today we've got No Boys here in the studio. Um, can you tell me the name of that track? Oh, that was uh, Or Well or So. Excellent. You guys sound great. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so uh, let's just go over a quick lineup here. We've got Trevor Cook on drums, uh, Anne-Marie Walters on bass, Emily Reimer on guitar, and Jonathan St. Michael on vocals and guitar. Uh, how are you guys feeling? Good. A yeah. little bit sweaty. My, I'm a little bit sweaty. Yeah, it's getting pretty sweaty right now. Yeah. Did you guys bring water with you? Uh, oh, that would have no, been a good idea. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking yeah. about bringing water, but um, I, it completely <laughs> slipped my mind. Yeah, yeah. next time. <laughs> Always next time. Um, so I'm just going to ask you guys a couple questions before we go into some more songs. Um, 
You guys are playing Kazoo Fest. Is this true? <laughs> I don't know how you found out about that, but yes, it is true. I'm in the know. I know these things. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, do you want to tell everyone uh, what day and time you're playing? So we're actually um, we're starting off the festival on Wednesday, April 11th, um, playing 10:15 p.m. at the E Bar, uh, opening up for Halifax, Halifax <laughs> bass band Mauno, which is going to be awesome. Yeah, real stoked on that. Yeah, super Excited. cool band. So that show is uh, just to reiterate: Wednesday, April 11th at the E Bar. Uh, doors, I believe, are at 10 p.m. Uh, all ages. Ten dollars at the door if you do not have a Crony Pass. Um, and unfortunately, not a physically accessible location. Uh, but that's really excited. Are you are exciting? Are you guys excited? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very excited. Yeah. That's super sweet. I'm still kind of, kind of nervous too, but yeah. 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 mainly yeah. excited. Nervous. Pressure's <laughs> on. We've all been going to Kazoo Fest for the last like uh, two or three years, so yeah. this is a big opportunity. We're really stoked on it. Does it feel a little surreal to be on the other side of it? Yeah, no, totally. Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, we've all been going to, like, the Kazoo Fest shows and, like, I don't know, seeing all these cool bands. I think, like, yeah, like, we saw Home Shake yeah. uh, a couple of years ago, and then it was, like, Nap Eyes. And those yeah. are, like, really big influences on our own sound. And now we're playing the same festival, which is awesome. Yeah, that must be very cool for you guys. Is there anyone else you're really excited to see at Kazoo this year? I'm so excited to see Dorothea pass. I love her so much. Mm. She's so cool. <laughs> I follow her on Instagram, and I think that she's, like, the most fashionable person I know <laughs> of. I don't know her. <laughs> well, maybe you can. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's, yeah. Playing, she's playing at, uh, I think, Red Brick on, like, Friday or something. But she's really cool, and everybody should go check her out. <laughs> nice. Anyone else you guys are excited to see? Um, Eddie Envy and Kurt Ender, if that's how you pronounce his name. Yeah, Kurt Ender is sweet. Yeah. That's at Take Time on Friday, I think 5 to 6, I think. Ten Boy Summit. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be awesome, too, yeah. <laughs> also, our, our homeboys, Luge. I, I don't know when they're playing, but they're playing at some point in time. It's on Saturday night, I Is think. it on Saturday? Oh, yeah, Trevor, yeah. you really know the schedule. <laughs> yeah, Trevor. Yeah. He has a tattooed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's on my, uh, yeah, it's a neck tattoo, actually. <laughs> oh, perfect. Is. Yeah. He's Thanks. dedicated. <laughs> um, so you guys are called No Boys. Um, correct me if my math is wrong, but I do believe there are two boys in the band. Uh, can uh, someone explain explain this to me? I can't seem to wrap my head around it. Uh, well, the I guess the inception of the name came back roughly like this time last year. Yeah. Um, we we're just kind of bouncing ideas around, and No Boys just kind of stuck because we all agreed to the sentiment that uh, the band would be better off with No Boys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Kinda, I personally, I suck hardcore. Trevor. <laughs> no, I'd, uh, I'd say the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, the band would definitely be better off in the hands of Emily and Anne Marie. You could also argue that you're not boys, you're men. I was just yeah. gonna say that. I was gonna say, are men allowed? Yeah. Oh, from time to time. I'm still, I'm still a child. Boy, Trev. Surprising you haven't been kicked out at this point, then. Yeah. He's on thin ice. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> Any day now. Uh, so, how long have you guys been a band for? Hmm. Uh, well, Trevor and I started jamming like in his bedroom um like january last year that's january 2017 yeah around that yeah. um and then once we kind of like got our stuff down um we invited Anne marie to come because we knew she had a bass guitar and could pretty much play bass that's a <laughs> <laughs> so are you are you using her for her her bass guitar is that what i'm hearing yeah, yeah pretty much oh, that's totally <laughs> it <laughs> at the right time yeah exactly the right instrument. <laughs> um and then we kind of like <laughs> did some stuff regarding that. And then Emily came back from Halifax uh, where she was studying NASCAD, right? Hell yeah. And then we're like, oh, like Emily can play guitar. Um, Join the band. Like, because we've always been like tight friends. Um, yeah. And now we're a tight band. So, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Um, is it also true that uh, you guys used to be on a basketball team together? Yeah, that is actually... Um, Don't fact check it. Yeah, no, no. But <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it is actually very true. Competitive basketball. Um, oh, wow. We had to retire early because yeah. I, I pulled a hammy one day. Yeah, yeah big ham. And we play as a team or we don't play at all. So. Um, so do you think your basketball abilities and your abilities to work together as a team um, that you've learned, does it compare to playing in a band? 
Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's where we really learned the power of teamwork and friendship was from basketball, and that just carried on to our dynamic as a band. You know, passing, uh, we pass, we communicate. Um, each of us is very capable of dunking. Um, oh yeah, yeah, exceptionally good at which dunking. Which translates to our uh, ability to just like go ham on our instrument. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, yeah. Do you ever forget that you're not playing basketball and does someone ever accidentally throw throw an instrument? Yeah, yeah, yeah I've done that. Trevor throws his cymbals around all over the place. Yeah, it's actually very annoying. You don't, <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be in the front row. <laughs> That's why I'm on thin ice, actually. It's <laughs> purely because of that. <laughs> nice. Um, well, do you guys want to play some more songs? Yeah. Sure yeah. Thing. All right, what are we going to hear? Uh, this one is uh, a song about my, my roommate. Perfect. One, two, three, four. Antonio, 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 Antonio. Good. You guys want to go into another song? Cool. We'll we'll play uh, two more. Uh, this is from our upcoming EP. Um, it's called uh, it's lo Losing Face. <laughs> All right, go for it. Cool. Thank you. 
Listening to Mind Fuzz on CFRU 93.3 FM in Guelph. Today we've got No Boys here in the studio if you're just tuning in. Um, they just played a couple of songs for us. Um, the first one, Antonio. Uh, tell me about him. You said he's your roommate. For those who haven't met him, um, I don't know. Maybe give some everyone some insight into why, why you wrote a song about him. Uh, oh boy. Where do I begin? Antonio. Uh, the man, the myth, the legend, the Italian stallion, a man of many names. <laughs> um, Mainly Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Antonio was my roommate uh, in first year. Um, at first, I couldn't stand the guy. Uh, he'd game all the time up until like 3 o'clock in the morning. He'd eat all my food. Um, the entire song is just an homage to him. It's full of inside jokes. Um, the first thing he asked me when he met me was, oh, what's your favorite episode of Spongebob? And I was like, oh, shit. Um, and he's like, okay, I'll make it easy. Top five. <laughs> <laughs> Still not easy. Yeah. What, is, uh, what, what was your answer to that question? I was like, ah. And before I could say anything, I was like, oh, okay, that's easy. Um, and then he started listing his top five. <laughs> and I was like, this. Do you remember what his top five is? No. Um, <laughs> I just, it, I zoned out. Yeah, I didn't care. <laughs> um, I was just trying to, I was just trying to party. <laughs> um, but yeah, this man is uh, literally like a genetic masterpiece. Mm-hmm. Um, rippling abs, chiseled chest. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Definitely. Um, 
thick dark locks of oh, curl- bouncing <laughs> curls bouncing curls <laughs> you couldn't curl your hair so nice like for no. three hundred dollars no, no, no. natural I, I think his <laughs> sorry antonio but i think his uh his mom was miss italia so uh that was just passed down to him that those <laughs> see you see what i'm working with now you know the son of miss italia yeah, I guess you can't really go wrong. <laughs> no, you can't. I don't know. Like, they got the formula right, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, does Does Antonio know how you feel about him? Oh, yeah. He's um, he's heard this song before. I played it to him, and uh, it brought a tear to his eye. He's, he just looked me, but looked at me and was like, thanks, man. Didn't you, like, first write that song when you knew him, and it just survived until now? Yeah. Um, well, I wrote it, like, last year. Just, like, the Antonio song has gone through a different like different variations different chord progressions different melodies um but the heart of the song has always been with me since yeah i know that, that was the, the birth of that song yeah. um if you guys have any merch um ideas i feel like a t-shirt with his face oh. on it might be a good idea yeah, actually that's great actually oh, that is actually a good idea <laughs> antonio dribbling a basketball <laughs> oh, even and, better. Antonio's also terrible at basketball, though. <laughs> Doesn't need to be accurate. I mean, I've, I've seen videos of this man playing basketball, and he throws the ball like he threw a football. <laughs> Why have you seen videos of him playing basketball? Are there are there a lot out there on the internet? Uh, there's one in particular. I'm not sure if it's surfaced, <laughs> um, but I've seen it. So uh, maybe, maybe he just got his sports confused. It's the live roasting of him. <laughs> yeah. I feel like he'd do good in like an Olympic setting, like javelin throw high jump um but oh. just not in like uh Boy, basketball shot yeah put, maybe. maybe shot put <laughs> yeah. just not basketball those are some good ideas um one of the uh, i picked up on one of the lyrics in that song uh something about going to antonio uh to give you advice when you need it uh would you say your mom is better at giving advice or antonio i guess it um regarding life advice um my mom is better at than Antonio. Um, Antonio is like, I think regarding like, not relationship, but like friendship, relationship, that kind of stuff. My interactions with other people. Antonio definitely knows how to give me a helping hand. <laughs> That's always good to have in a, in a roommate and a friend. Yeah, exactly. He's been my day one, living with him so far. So, so far so good. <laughs> <laughs> you, also, you also don't know anything different. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Nice. Um, on the topic of songs, um, I was just curious, um, the songs that you guys have, do you kind of write them collectively or do you come to each other um, with an idea or how does your songwriting process usually go? Um, I think for a couple of the songs, I like to um, write them beforehand. Like I typically get chord progressions and melodies and lyrics ready. And then that's just kind of like oh, the ball and then I bring them to like the guys um, and they all contribute their own spin to it. Um, and that's how we get the ball rolling, I guess. Um, and like, there's definitely songs like Emily has her own songs that she like works on with Anne-Marie as well. Um, like, yeah, we all can kind of contribute to, I guess the output of songs. Like, do you guys want to comment on that? Like, Sounds like a pretty collective process then. Yeah, you summed it up pretty well. Thank you. Um, you do a pretty good job of bringing the balls to the court. <laughs> <laughs> that was a basketball, uh, what is that, a metaphor? It's oh. a metaphor. <laughs> it's a metaphor. Oh, I thought you were referencing soccer or something. <laughs> that was my first guess, too. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it that basketball is, like, the most joked about sport? Like, you never hear anyone making kind of, like, lame jokes about, like, soccer or, like, football. That's actually That's an interesting that's an interesting <laughs> question actually I, don't, I think huh i think basketball is just f- kind of funny um <laughs> especially since like like back in the day like the 70s and 80s you just have these like really tall dudes um wearing like short shorts and stuff like that just kind of chasing a ball around a court it's so fast paced it's just like it's hard not to joke about it especially because you have people like shaquille o'neal he's hilarious and there's like the pop culture around it like you see yeah. celebrities going to uh, yeah, Nicki Minaj. Like, that was a festival. Well, was it Fergie? Was she singing? <laughs> <laughs> Fergie yeah. killed it. Yeah. The national anthem a few weeks ago. I don't know if you caught that. She I it. didn't. 
She's definitely my inspo. Yeah, for I'm, yeah I've noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> That's an accurate. I can see it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that is true. I think there's a lot of pop culture that revolves around basketball, and mm-hmm. so it's just it's easier to joke around with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, um, I would agree. Um, that was just something I was I was wondering about because um, <laughs> you guys as a as a collective do make a lot of basketball jokes, uh, but not just you. I think it is like pretty popular on the internet. Um, I think it's just maybe the easiest one to go to. I'm not really sure. Or maybe the most watched sport. Yeah. You can play it on the street if you want. I don't know. Yeah, yeah it's very, very versatile. And I, feel like, I feel like everybody's played basketball at one point. Like, not, I've never, like, really played hockey, but basketball. Basketball's easy. You just <laughs> throw the ball. Yeah. I've gotten some basketballs to the head before by accident. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, me too, actually. Yeah. Classic. Yeah. <laughs> or, or bump. Oh, I mean, that's a classic one, right? That's aggressive. That was an aggressive game. Yeah, <laughs> that really oh, was. You guys want to hear a fun fact? Um, <laughs> I'm actually from Stratford, and, <laughs> uh, the home of the Bieber. And I've heard rumor from my family. I don't actually remember this, but he used to play basketball in our driveway. In your driveway? Oh no wow. way! Did he so, ask? No. That's why my mom was kind of mad. Yeah. And I'd be like, he's a total wiener. He wouldn't about even it. be like playing with anyone who lived in our house. He'd just like bring his other friends. <laughs> play in our house. Honestly, that's a classic Bieber. Do you have any other uh, Bieber stories to share? Um, well, yeah. One time he, in the, when I was in the fifth grade, told me that my brother smokes drugs. And <laughs> in the fifth grade, that is a pretty scary thing to to hear. So I cried. I thought he was gonna die. <laughs> And my friend Margaret was actually on track team with him <laughs> one time. He, um, he, he came to the track with, like, he had sprained his ankle or something, but his story was that 50 Cent shot him. <laughs> and that's why he was injured. <laughs> so that just sums up the little, what little awesome. rascal. Yeah, he's a rascal. <laughs> Did you yeah. ever have any personal interactions with him? Um, like, on the street, was he ever playing, oh, playing music? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he used to busk in front of one of the theaters downtown. He'd be like playing his little acoustic, acoustic guitar, singing his little heart out. And one time, my brother, the one who was rumored to have smoked drugs, he um, yelled out the window, shut the F up, Bieber. <laughs> and that was pretty memorable as well. Yeah. Wow. Not many people can say that, <laughs> that they've experienced that. No, it's pretty, pretty special. It's Where is he now? Who knows? Maybe. Miami, yeah. maybe. I feel like other other people know, maybe. <laughs> yeah, we haven't really been keeping up with Bieber lately. <laughs> no. We're not in the know there. He's taking a turn to religion, I think. Has he? Yeah. yeah he there was some post about that. He made that he's post about Easter and <laughs> Jesus or something. Yeah. Oh, I hadn't I hadn't heard that. I found God. <laughs> well, good for him. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you guys want to go into some more songs? We can talk a little bit after. Sure. sure. Yeah, sure. All right. Um, if you're just tuning in, we've got No Boys, uh, based in Guelph, Ontario, on the show today. You're listening to CFRU, and they're going to play us some songs. Cool. Thank you for having us once again. We'll play some uh, songs for you.
that that one, that one was Brandon. He's another friend of mine. <laughs> This one's called Second Gary. Okay, sound great. Do you want to play one more? Sure. Uh, yeah, you want to do one? Cool. Yeah, sure.
All right, you guys sound great. Uh, if you're just tuning in, uh, you're listening to Mind Fuzz on CFRU 93.3 FM in Guelph. We've got No Boys in the studio uh, performing live. Um, you guys still doing okay? I think yeah, so. Awesome. I'm doing, I'm doing superb. Um, has your thirst passed, or are you still still pretty thirsty in there? <laughs> yeah, I was kind of thinking like halfway through a song, I was like, I probably should have brought a water bottle or something. Yeah. yeah. This is actually uh, this is an SOS to anybody listening. We're uh, <laughs> we're parched over here. <laughs> You're like SpongeBob in that really early episode. Yeah. I don't need it. I don't need it. <laughs> That's the tree dome, right? <laughs> That's it. Oh, it's so good. Oh yeah, and then the they say goober, and then they cry. <laughs> And the tear sparks oh, the fire alarm, and then I think the fire alarm sprays The sprinklers, water yeah. yeah. That's the movie, right? Yeah, the SpongeBob movie. Yeah. And then, and then, like, then yeah. David Hasselhoff takes them home. David Hasselhoff takes them home and shoots them in the ocean with his pet. <laughs> Iconic. I feel like, um, so, hey, this is, Will is now in the <laughs> other booth talking hey, to you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, I, uh, I feel like we're in a generational moment right now. Mm. Given the sheer, like the just like the recent meme trends, where SpongeBob is really being recognized yeah. as a cultural force that it is and always was. Yeah. Do you have anything to say about that? I mean, I, I support it personally. I noticed like people. Okay, so we we're born in '96, and like people like within two years or three years older than us, they don't even know the SpongeBob movie. Like they haven't even seen it. And it was, like, really important to us. Yeah, yeah. Goofy yeah. Goober was my anthem. Yeah. yeah. Goofy Goober rock, specifically. It's, it's yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think just SpongeBob overall was, I don't know, just really relatable. The humor in it was superb. Mm-hmm. At yeah. least in, like, the earlier seasons. The new seasons, I feel like that's for a younger generation, younger no demographic. Um, I don't know. I think they changed, like, writers or something like that. Yeah, the I know the original, like, voice actor for SpongeBob left after the second season, I think. That's not true. They fired the whole creative team after the third season, I can't including the creator. I, Did they? Is that, is, that, is that a fact? I, I believe it's a fact. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that makes sense. I don't know. Early seasons of SpongeBob, I think it was, like, up until season six um, mm-hmm. or something along those lines. Um, that was decent. That was decent, especially when the animation kind of coincided with the... Uh, creative levels and like the humor mm-hmm. that was good but I don't know lately I just I can't relate to it anymore there's nothing relatable just, about it this um maybe a time for me to uh, make a confession Uh-oh. <gasps> and I think I'm about to offend a lot of people um I think in total I may have seen three episodes of Spongebob oh, no. get out um and I I understand that I live under a rock most of the time but the Spongebob <laughs> references I get like even less than I do most things. Did you just make a Spongebob Did reference? Did you know that uh, Patrick lived under a rock? No. <laughs> <laughs> Unintentional. <laughs> um, but I think, the, funny. I think the reason, um, in my elementary school, we had a music teacher, Mrs. Hill, and she was, she was a fluffy haired woman, very, very <gasps> crazy. Um, she loved SpongeBob like more than any adult should ever love SpongeBob, I think. And she made us sing the theme song every day on our way out of oh, class. No. And she would like teach it to us on the recorder. So I think I was just like scarred from a young age and I, I haven't been able to go back. Apparently it's tradition at uh, Kitchener Ranger Games that about seven minutes into the third period they always sing the SpongeBob SquarePants theme song. Wow. Isn't that a nice tradition? Yeah, I, I guess so. <laughs> yeah. There's some good music in that show, too. Oh, yeah, legendary music. Oh, yeah, if you listen to, like, the instrumental, like, little ukulele tracks. Yeah. Apparently, they had gotten that, um, they had just gone into, like, some sort of, like, music uh, catalog or something like that and just got a bunch of stock music from old, like, 50s and 60s, uh, like, yeah. beach tracks and stuff. Mm. That's why I heard they got a lot of their music from. But I think, yeah, SpongeBob's real claim to fame is the original tracks mm-hmm. uh, that they come up with. Um, what's a good one? Well, you had that one episode that was entirely scored by Pantera. <laughs> Whoa, that's wait, epic. really? That's, uh, <laughs> uh, is it called Late Hibernation Week? I forget. It's oh, the one. That was a good episode. Yeah, yeah. where Sandy yeah. gets SpongeBob into all the extreme sports. That was Pantera? That's Pantera, oh, that's doing cool. like all the shreddy, shreddy metal in the background. Yeah, that's when he has to find like a. Isn't it a, yeah. a hay and a needle stack <laughs> yeah, or something? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> That's a good episode. Um, if people want to listen to your music, where where can they find it? That's a good question. 
Um, <laughs> we're on SoundCloud right now, you know, like doing this whole SoundCloud deal. Um, after we release our uh, debut uh, EP, <laughs> AP, AP, <laughs> uh, which is going to be coming out pretty soon, I think, hopefully within the next week, uh, we will be on Bandcam. Uh, band, <laughs> band Wowzers. Bandcamp.com. Yeah. yeah, Bandcamp.com, No Boys 420. Our uh, EP is going to be called uh, Gladly. Yeah. yeah. I think. Yeah, because we're always glad. <laughs> we'll gladly do anything. <laughs> That's a good attitude to have. <laughs> Plans for a physical release or uh, or or T-shirts, merch of any kind? Um, I think uh, buttons and shirts, I think we were talking about, but we're definitely going to get cassettes, I think, was what we were going to do oh, for a physical yeah. release. Hell yeah. Because yeah, that's just, you know, they're, they're cheap. Um, they're cool. Cute, too. Kids yeah. are using them. Yeah. You uh, didn't want to release um, basketballs with your logo on them? And then there's a, a cassette inside, so when you when you ball too hard and the ball pops, it forces people to play basketball exactly in an extreme way. Yeah, the thing is, um, we've been in works with Wilson, like the the sporting goods company. Um, oh yeah. Just yeah, like yeah. a lot of stuff gets just lost in between uh, managers and Yo, stuff like that. Yo, you should do basketball like jerseys though. Oh, oh. that'd be good. Yeah. Damn. That would be cool. Awesome. Actually, yeah. You guys, you guys yeah. Basketball style. We were uh, we were joking about uh, having like a basketball sized pin of a basketball. I don't think so either, but that'd be really there's good. There's a will, there's a way. <laughs> like, and I know that we're all dreamers. I think we should put big and famous. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we put the basketball, put a basketball in there. Kick drum. Yeah. <laughs> um, but are you guys like still doing like merch? Because I know you guys have been doing it for a long time. Yeah. Um, but are you guys like looking for jobs? Because we're looking for some marketers for our are, band right now. Are we looking for marketers? I mean, yeah, they do actually have really good yeah. ideas. I know, I'm desperate. <laughs> so if anyone's looking for a job, you can email noboysband at gmail.com, and they can hook you up. We have a lot of money to spend. Almost <laughs> too much money. I'm just... <laughs> we're, we're yeah, we're throwing it away. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely loaded. Like, it's almost comical. <laughs> we, more money, more problems. Almost, we look like Scrooge McDuck half the time diving into... <laughs> all those coins in our vaults. You got some of that SpongeBob chocolate bar money. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Um, for all the for the listeners, that's a com- all that was a complete lie. We're all uh, piss poor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm broke. Yeah. <laughs> but if anyone wants to volunteer to be your 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 marketer, how would that work? Totally. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And you would pay them in what? Just friendship. Friendship, yeah. Maybe Good. Like, Maybe like a nice game of basketball. Yeah, uh, <laughs> a couple scrimmages here and there. Yeah, I, well, I've gone to the point in my life where it's like no new friends, you know. My friendship has hard to earn. Um, so yeah, tough luck anyone volunteering. You're not gonna get. You're not gonna get anything from me. Honestly, I'll play, you, I'll play you in basketball, but I'm not going easy. If you ask me, you don't want it anyways. So yeah, it's not. It's not worth that much. Um, all right, we've got no boys in the studio. Um, you can catch them playing at Kazoo Fest next Wednesday, which is April 11th at the E Bar. Uh, doors are at 10 p.m. No Boys goes on at 10:15. Uh, Mauno is playing playing after them at 11 p.m. It's ten dollars at the door, unless you have a crony pass. Um, and once again, that's next Wednesday, April 11th at the E Bar. Um, hope to see everyone there. Uh, do you guys want to play some more songs to finish out the hour? Yeah, I mean, we could. Yeah. Uh, um, I want to thank you guys again for coming in. Uh, this oh, has uh, been fun. I hope you've had a, a good experience as well. Oh, yeah, it's been awesome. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> You're listening to CFRU, and here is No Boys. Thank you. 
You're in my dream Listening to CFRU 93.3 FM. <laughs> 